fucked up, man. That's all I got to say because uh, she she shouldn't. Like I said, we didn't want to bring this stuff out, but it is what it is. So let's start with the beginning, okay? Let's just address the elephant in the room. Fresh is an idiot, okay? I had this conversation with him off air. I told him, "You, you th- this girl is bad news. This is you, you know what the hell are you doing having sex with this girl, etc. Unprotected, whatever." Let's just call a spade a spade. He made a big mistake. Big mistake rocking with this girl, hanging out with her, etc. right? But what I will do is I'm going to go outline their relationship for you guys, okay? I have dates here, etc. and we're going to walk through it real fast. So, number one, they were never in a serious relationship, okay? Though she might say, oh, I was in a serious relationship with him, and she goes on this podcast saying I loved him, etc. He was seeing other women. And you guys know that because if you saw the video clip, right? She, in there, she says that he was talking to other women. So she knows that, right? So they met on November 21st at El Santo, okay? Which is a club here in Miami, right? Pretty much fresh trademark. Uh, They went on their first date November 26th. They had sex that night, okay? She left on November 28th for New York. As you guys know, this girl has an apartment in New York as well. She was going back and forth between here and there. Uh, And then they talked on WhatsApp on January 1st, 2024. So he saw her again, guys, right? So she left the 28th, and then he started talking on WhatsApp on the 1st. I mean, they were talking on Instagram before that, but as you guys know, we can't show those messages because first Instagram got wiped with mine. Then, on December 28th to January 10th, she was in Miami, right? They spent a few days together. About half that time, she wasn't with Fresh, right? Then, they didn't see each other again until March 9th, right, in Barbados. They met in Barbados and hung out in Barbados for a few days, right? They were there for approximately three days. Then, she was in Miami for the rest of that period, right? So from March 9th to 24th, they spent time together here in Miami and also in Barbados. That's where she met his family, etc. Right? Then, so what? We're talking about 20 days here that they spent, even though they knew each other since November, she was in China for a period of time, New York, etc., come back and forth. So they've spent about, I'd say roughly 15 to 20 days together, right? Cumulatively. During the course of this time, there were a bunch of red flags that Fresh noticed, that made him say, you know what, I don't know if I could take this girl seriously. Number one, he had mentioned to her that there was a guy in Las Vegas. As you guys know, we go to Las Vegas all the time to do, you know, Access Vegas, etc. We'll actually be there tomorrow, okay? Um, and when we were out there, a photographer had said, oh, I know her. And, Fre- and he didn't say anything bad. However, when Fresh mentioned to her that someone in Vegas knew her, she got really nervous and scared. And he was like, hmm, that's weird. Why would you get so nervous, right? Number two. She has three phones, okay? Three. He saw towards the end of the relationship and what made him kind of say, I don't want to deal with this girl anymore, was he saw random conversations with four numbers unsaved on one of her phones, okay? Uh, when they came back from Barbados, they were stopped by customs. He, she, they interviewed her for two hours, guys, okay? When she was being held at customs. You guys know I used to work... Uh, for Immigration and Customs Enforcement as an investigator for Homeland Security Investigations. And no, normally when they detain you at the airport like that, something is going on. And they detained her for two hours, and she showed pictures of her and Fresh together, etc. More than likely, what I'm suspecting, I don't know this for a fact, but then for them to detain her for two hours. Remember, guys, she's a foreign national. She's Chinese. She's here on a visitor visa, which she's admitted on other podcasts, by the way, which is typically a B1, B2 visa. They probably think that she's here working illegally or maybe doing some kind of sex work, which we're going to get into that as well, okay? We don't know for a fact, but for them to hold you at the border like that tells me something, right? Then, after Fresh cut the relationship off with her, she finally admitted that she had sugar daddies in the past. She took off to New York right away, right? And she didn't, she, she, and, and we'll show an Instagram picture right now, actually, real fa- uh, of when she took off. So she goes, after Fresh told her, Hey, I don't want to be with you anymore. I don't intend on marrying you. And, um, you know, I'm not going to get you an apartment because mind you, this all started guys because she wanted an apartment and fresh said no. Right. And she put drops. So she leaves abruptly and she drops the Instagram story saying, bye, going to find a better life. Right. As she's getting on a plane to go back to New York and she's been in New York since. Right. She left on or about, I want to say March 26th, I think is the day that she left March 26th. So they get back. So the timeline again, November 21st, they meet, okay? No, uh, they hang out again uh, December 28th to January 10th for a period of time. Then from March 9th to the 24th, he basically breaks up with her 
a day or two after they get back, uh, after um, they're back in Barbados here in Miami, says, hey, I don't want to get you the apartment. I don't, I don't want to marry you. I don't think this is going to work out like long term because she wanted a serious relationship. So she gets on a plane and leaves on the 26th, right? Mind you, well, actually, you know, we're going to talk about that later on. We're going to talk about the pregnancy in that in a whole other chapter. We got a couple chapters on this thing. But I just wanted to give you guys the relationship, okay? So that's how they met. That's how long they've hung out with each other and known each other. Though they've known each other since November, cumulatively speaking, okay, they only spent roughly between 15 to 20 days actually hanging out with each other and speaking to each other. And during the course of them meeting and hanging out with each other, Fresh is vetting her. He's testing her. He's asking her questions, etc. And she failed the test, right? She failed the test. These are a couple of the red flags that he noticed while he was hanging out with her in person that made him say, I can't come into this girl. I can't take this girl seriously. Mind you, he was doing his thing and he had other women as well, which is something that she was also angry about during this whole situation. So there we go. Now that we have an idea of the relationship, let's get into the other elephant in the room, okay? We talked about the first elephant in the room with the relationship and Fresh being an idiot, which we he is. Let's just be honest here. He made a big fucking mistake. And it is what it is. You know, guys make mistakes. No one is perfect. But this one was a big one. And we got to take accountability for that. He fucked up here, right? So as you guys know, she's been running around. She went on Abba and Preach's uh, pod, right? And I'm not surprised. You know, Abba and Preach have been making videos on us for years now at this point. They've made somewhere between 30 to 40 videos on us, uh, talking shit, trying to attack our character, etc. And other podcasts as well she's went on, you know, talking about this story, etc. She's essentially been doing a press run the past few days ever since she leaked this phone call and text messages, right? And I'm going to show you guys a clip. One of the things she's been doing is saying that she is not a sex worker, right? So let's go ahead and uh, play the two clips where she says this. Here's from one podcast, which I will not name. They're accusing me for being an escort and being on this kind of website. Just use the brand if I'm Miss Asia and I'm a former bodybuilder. Why would I put myself on the internet? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Website. That is no, it doesn't make sense. We even uh, one thing that I and I didn't. Okay, so he says, "Yeah, doesn't make sense. I don't believe it. Yeah, you're not." Now let's go ahead and play uh, our favorite <laughs> YouTubers here, because and and it's interesting because these guys were so quick to try to use this as content to make us look bad, they didn't properly vet this girl. But it's okay, I'm going to do it for them. You know, because since they want to bring this girl on and platform her, etc., but they don't know the real Daisy Chen. They don't know Jin Chen. But I know Jin Chen. And I'm going to make you guys very familiar with her as well. We're all going to know Jin Chen when this is done. Let's play their clip now. That I would interview the woman in question at the heart of this whole thing. She provided me a bunch of screenshots, uh, screen recordings, and a bunch of different things. And I think it answered a lot of the questions that would seem to be unanswered before. Things like whether or not she's a worker. She isn't. What was the time? Okay. Abba. You stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to show it right now. So she, let's let's uh, go ahead and she said she's not a sex worker. She's not an escort. Okay. What's this? In this photo that you guys can see here, we can see Jin Chen with meeting up with a potential client. Okay. I'm not going to say where this was. But what I'm about to show you guys is all exclusive stuff that no one else has. Okay? But it's an anonymous source. Okay? So, this is a photo of her meeting up with a guy. And it gets better. We got video and audio. Run the clip. If you call me an escort, prove it. Prove it. Firstly, you should pay her. No. Cash only. No. We can transfer. Do you have cash? I would prefer to pay you half. Stop. We for maybe 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay
that's the way I sleep in the bed. I cannot stay for two and three hours. And you can't stay for two and three hours. I can't stay, but I cannot have sex for two and three hours. Like, who can do that? It's not just sex for two and three hours. You will have to trust me on this. You will not be uncomfortable. You will not be painful. If you are, you may go. I will not force you to stay. You can pay me half an hour, stay here for one hour. One hour? It doesn't mean you're only going to stay for one hour. Then I will stay here for one hour, you know. Because for you, one hour is enough. You said two, three hours. I cannot stay for two or three hours. And you can't stay for two or three hours. I can't stay. Honestly, the onus is on you to make this experience wonderful so that I will want to see you again. So, okay, so let's get started. Are you sure? Yeah. I could end the podcast right there. But wait! There's more. There's more. Because, I, see, she's been running around saying that she's not an escort, etc. No, I don't do this, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'll let you guys decide what you think after seeing that. Okay? But we're going to keep going. There's more. I could end it right there. But let's go. Let's keep going. So... Obviously, you guys can see here, that sounds like negotiating for something. I don't know what particularly, right? But I think we all know kind of what it may or may not be, right? So she's also talked about how she's a good person and her character, etc. We got some more, guys. So I have here a Chinese police report. You guys are probably wondering, Mara, what the hell? What's this? Guys, this is a police report where she basically stole money from an individual. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She stole money from an individual. All right. And I had a friend of mine translate this for me. As you guys will know, I play Overwatch. Right. And I have a buddy. I call him the China man. And uh, he went ahead and kindly translated this police report for us. And we have it for y'all here. OK. At about 1940 on the evening of August 27, 2018, the reporter came to the police station to report that he met with a Chinese woman at about 12 o'clock noon on August 27, 2018 at lane 288 of Daza Road and exchanged 6,000 yuan for A70 with this woman. So basically, he wanted her to give him cash, right? At around uh, 4.45 on August 27, 2018, the woman hailed a car through Diddy Taxi and asked, and then asked the reporter for 6,000 RMB. And then the reporter gave 6,000 RMB to the woman, and the two got in the car. Soon after, she claimed that she needed the, to get money from China Construction Bank, name of the bank, and asked to stop at the China Construction Bank on Yongjia Road, Zuish District, Shanghai. But the woman did not return 10 minutes after getting out the car, and the reporter sent a message to the woman, but she replied she didn't want to meet the reporter. The reporter felt that he had been defrauded, so he reported the case. So this woman takes this guy's money and runs off with it, right? One of the people that she, uh, one of her clients, right? So what does that say about her character? And you guys might be wondering, well, Myron, do you got proof? Oh, I do got proof, actually. I got video. Here she is, taking the dude's money and doing what she's about to do with it. Hey, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could end it there. I could end it there, can I? But guess what? I've got you in my sights. There's more. Let's keep going. The show goes on. The show goes on. We're going all the way today, baby. We going all the way, cause guess what? I'm fucking Leonardo DiCaprio in this bitch. The show goes I'm not on. Leaving. I'm not leaving. This is my home. They're gonna need a fucking wrecking ball to take me out of here. Let's fucking go. All right. So here we have her ID, right? Here she is. We obviously blurted out personal information so that we wouldn't dox her, but it's to show you guys that we know what we're talking about here. We actually have her, Jin Chen. That's your real name, by the way, Jin Chen. It's not Daisy. You run around calling yourself Daisy Chen, but you're really Jin Chen, okay? And we found out that you got fired from your job, okay? Here's where you used to work for, right? For a marketing company. You were a marketing manager, Daisy, or should I say Jin Chen? And we had the documents to show that you got fired and why you got fired. Again, this is all in Chinese, but guess what? My boy, we rise once again, a.k.a. China Man. The guy that I play Overwatch with and we rage together when we destroy these scrubs. He went ahead and translated for you guys. Once again, shout out to the China man. 
We got the official documents. Shout out to We Rise. He's he's on the line as well. Um, but here it is. Here's why she got fired, guys. Okay. Miss Chen Jing, you have been working at Shanghai B Mang Performance Agency Co. since July 2nd, 2018, and your current job is a business assistant. The three year labor contract signed between you and the company on July 2nd, 2018 shall be terminated on August 3rd, 2018, and the employment relationship shall be terminated at the same time due to the following circumstances. Hmm. What else was going on in 2018 when she got fired from her job around this time? Oh! She was stealing money and negotiating for fun with people in uh, in rooms that which we showed video of earlier. Oh, interesting, very interesting. By consensus of the parties, the worker is proved to be ineligible for employment during the probationary period. The worker seriously violates the rules and regulations of the unit. The employee is seriously derelict in his duties or commits fraud for personal gain, causing major cut damage to the company. You stupid. The employee establishes labor relations with other employers at the same time, which has a serious impact on the completion of the work of the employer or refuses to make corrections upon the company's request. The personal certification materials provided by the employee to the company are false or the company concludes or reviews the labor contract cont contrary to its true intention by coercion or taking advantage of the danger of others. The worker is investigated for criminal responsibility in accordance with law. After the expiration of the medical treatment period, the worker cannot engage in the original job or work arranged by the company. The worker is not competent for the job and is still incompetent for the job after training or job adjustment. There's a major change in the objective circumstance on which the labor contract is concluded, making it impossible to form the labor contract, and the two parties cannot reach an agreement on the change after negotiation between the parties. Other circumstances provided for by laws and administrative regulations. Please go to the company's personal administration department before August 6, 2018 to go through the resignation pr uh, procedures, such as work handover, return of goods, and settlement of expenses and remuneration. So what does this all mean, guys? Right? Obviously, they have to formally get rid of her and list out why. But obviously, we got fraud, using fake documents to get the job, um, exploiting the company's resources. We actually heard from the boss that fired her that she stole money from the company. So not only was she engaged in nefarious activities that may or may not include sex work, she's stealing from uh, clients, right? They're filing police reports on her. She's getting fired from jobs because she's stealing from them too. Is this someone that you guys would believe? Obviously... She's been lying all over the place. So she's having inappropriate relationships at her place of work as well, which is another reason why they got rid of her. Interesting. Very, very interesting. But wait, there's more, guys. We're going to keep going. So as you guys know, right, she said, oh, I don't care about money. I just want to hold fresh accountable, whatever the hell. Let's run the clip from our guy, Destiny, real quick, where she went ahead and had a whole conversation with him. I don't care about the money. I like his lifestyle. By the United States law, he has to pay for the child support. How much money do you think a man should make for? Yeah, I told him a million dollars. Walter apologized for everything and came clean on everything. Wouldn't you want him to be involved in like your child's life? But why would you care about that? Shouldn't the priority be to like build a healthy life for your future child? Shouldn't that be the focus? Okay, how you, you don't care. You're not caring. The child right now is just a money ticket for you. You're not caring at all about the child. Why are you leaking all What is all the this money? Publicly? What the money is the, is the child the support that you think that you were talking about earlier. Look, that you're very familiar are you? with. The, uh, I don't want to talk to you. Pause. Um, Destiny's going to take a break. He doesn't want to. She doesn't want to talk to him because he's exposing the truth. You say in one sentence, I don't care about the money. Then you're saying, oh, yeah, a man's got to make a million dollars a year. Right? Guys, this woman is a predator. She's obviously coming, is coming and trying to use guys, etc. And here's the thing, right? Like I said before, I fresh fucked up, right? He made a mistake. You shouldn't have messed with this girl in the first place. This girl's a predator, all right? But this is what happens a lot of times when you're a guy, you got some money, you got some status, etc. Girls will try to use you, right? Thank God he saw the red flags and cut it off when he did. Obviously, he didn't cut it off fast enough, but this girl had intentions, right? Nefarious intentions. So I just want to ask you guys one thing, right? So obviously we've went through who this woman is, Daisy Chen, a.k.a. her real name. I'm going to call her Jen for the rest of the show. Jin Chen. Okay, Jen, we know who you really are now. You're involved with escorting, potentially, right? Allegedly. Well, we saw the video, right? We know that you stole money from somebody, ran away with it, basically robbed the guy. 
We know that you can't hold a job. You got fired from stealing money from that company as well, having inappropriate relations, etc. So let me ask y'all, someone like this that has this kind of character, do you think they're going to be honest? I mean, let, let's go through it real quick. So on March 24th, just so you guys know, right, when they got back, when they, uh, towards the end, she did a pregnancy test, guys. And first, I didn't want to mention this on the last show, but I'm going to mention it. Came back negative. Okay. He saw it and his mom saw it. She did a pregnancy test on the 24th, came back negative. Right. Then a week later, she calls Fresh to say, oh, I'm pregnant. And she records the phone call. Okay. Trying to get a response. Oh, what are you going to do to me, etc. You know what? We could play the clip right now. Let's play it real quick. Can we pull it up real fast on the side, guys? Uh, the phone call that she had with, with Fresh. Okay. Let's pull that up real quick. Right. So she calls him and tries to get a response out of him. And Fresh obviously stays calm, etc. And the thing I also want you guys to know is that there was an agreement between him and her that they weren't going to have kids. He told her he didn't want kids. And she agreed to that. Okay? And I have proof of that right here, right now. Roll the clip from, uh, from our idiots over there in Canada. So this is... Uh, when Abba went ahead and interviewed her, right? So first, this is him uh, asking her about uh, them being monogamous, if I'm not mistaken, right? All right. I don't want to. Um, then I ask her, well, why do you not want to be intense about monogamy, but you are rushing to have a kid? I asked some tough that's questions. A, that's, a, that's a good question. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm These morons can't even spell. <laughs> they were in such a rush to get this video out. And try to make us look crazy that they couldn't even spell. That just goes to show how thirsty these clowns are for attention, bro. Dudes went and did a video immediately. And shot it. Just shot it. Oh, God, we got to make content. Oh. 